Hello, everyone. Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is the week and charts. Obviously, want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I know we haven't done shows in a while. I've been really busy with the China webinar, our recordings, and then I was caught up with um, with a lot of other things like holidays and on. So just been just been kind of crazy. And then markets, of course, always add to the mix. Uh, but Hopefully we'll be back on schedule for a while. I know we got a couple of holidays coming up. It's a little hard to put together a show on a holiday week. So we're talking about, well, obviously current market conditions, I'll have a ton to say about that. I do want to spend some time talking about the VIX and where we are now. And I think we're near a short-term correction. So we're going to have to pay attention to that. Your questions obviously are trading and your favorite stock in crypto picks. And crypto is heating up. I'm getting kind of excited about crypto again. I actually put on a couple of positions while I was getting ready to go live tonight looking through the charts and we can look at uh, some of that in just one minute uh, obviously uh, when we get to the live charts feel free to ask about uh, stocks and we're going to focus on well i want to get back to the the intraday trend trading and is it worth it and it's a big maybe with with a lot of caveats and I intended on really fleshing that out a lot like is it worth it and in, in the meantime i got caught up and kind of catching up on on everything that I've been doing lately as far as the the charts and what makes a good uh, intraday trend day and what doesn't and how to kind of survive in between. And that's something I'm going to focus on tonight. But I think as I do that, a lot of these caveats will come out and then I'll do something more official in upcoming weeks. And I call it an experiment because I'm kind of experimenting with this to see what happens and, and i'll flesh that out in just one second so again crypto is heating up pretty excited about crypto and i'm going to show you a few things there in just a few seconds now one thing that i really wanted to focus on tonight is free rolling and that's the secret to longer term trading success and if you don't know me that'll make a lot more sense in a little while there's a disclaimer screen as you know you can lose money trading or as i often sum it up all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. That's my buddy, Greg Morris. I was just talking with Greg a few minutes ago. He's getting back involved with the AAPTA, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's talk about intraday trend trading. Now, it's a bit of an experiment. I, I have a few clients that have come back to me after years away, and they're like, Dave, are you day trading? I, I, I don't believe it, because I preached against day trading for so long, and you know my shoulders are tense right now, and, and I think older like I am, there's only so many decisions left in my life. I think we're, we're all born with so many decisions in us. And that's why, as I preach, uh, air traffic controllers and inner center city ER doctors have very, very, very high burnout rates. You just can't have that many ups and downs. So if you are going to do this, you're going to have to be disciplined. And like I call it, intraday trend trading. Now, before I'll get into all these caveats in, in the upcoming weeks, but I will tell you this, as much as hands off as I try to be, I find myself kind of chained to my office now. I used to put on trades, even some of these day trades, like opening up reversals at all, and I'd hop on my bike and go ride and get some exercise or, or go to lunch with my wife and things like that. So it's like I work really hard to gain the amount of freedom that I have, and then now I've chained myself back to the desk. So these things will come up in, in future episodes, but I want to focus tonight mostly on trying to capture that trend day and i've been paying very much attention or, or very I mean, very cognizant of what's happening on these days and this is a slide from last time and i'm going to update you from december 8th on and you can see that we do really really well or i do really really well when the market trends and when it chops not so much now before i I do a walkthrough. We'll go through this one kind of quickly, and then I want to show you the more recent ones. But you'll notice I'm using 30 minute charts. And when I started this experiment, I was using five minute charts. And, and basically, I'm trying to apply a lot of the knowledge I know about trading, such as free rolling. And I'll walk you through an example of that in a few minutes, a couple examples of that. And just general knowledge, money management trends, uh, bigger picture patterns, Russian doll type of setups, and that type of thing that we talk about sometimes to the 
intraday chart. So I started with the five minute chart. And I know I've said the story a thousand times. I'll say it again, a thousand and one, I guess. I remember one day I didn't have any trades in e minis. And not that I was that good at the e mini trading, or not that I'm that good at e mini trading now, because it's a very choppy and noisy market, but I do trade them. And I remember thinking, you know, I went all day without a trade. And then the next day I went like all day without another trade. Then I third day, I believe, and, and I'm sure I've mixed the story up a little bit, but you've got to get the gist. But the third day, if memory serves, I took a trade and I made money. And then one other day I went without trades. And then the following day or whatever, I made money again. And it's like my trading just went down drastically. And I was like, what the hell's going on? And then one day I realized I had accidentally or inadvertently changed my five minute chart to a 15 minute chart. And that helped me out quite a bit. And then in more recent times, I got to thinking, what if I changed to a 30 minute chart? And this is what we're gonna look at tonight is 30 minute charts. And you can see that it filters out a lot of the noise. Now, one of my clients who's very active day trader, he misconstrued my 30 minutes charts as I won't do anything during the first 30 minutes. Now, sometimes you get a, a wide range bar on the open and you might just have to go with it. Uh, for instance, let's say this bar here was on the open and it looked like it was gonna be a route higher then you have no choice but to go with it. But anyway, you can see when we last did this update, we had a trend day lower and $480 in that day. And then the next day, what do we have? Chop, 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 little fake outs up and down. So that ended up a whopping $52. Now look what happened the next day. We went sideways for a while and then we broke out of that range and we had a nice route day higher. So when you start seeing numbers like this, it's like, okay, well, my shoulders are a little tense but maybe it could be worthwhile. And what I want to do is if I can make this experiment work, I want to begin to to bottle it up a little bit. And, and I sure as hell don't want to do an intraday trading service, but maybe what I could do is if I can kind of bottle this up a little bit and figure out some ways of doing this other than traders feel, I could share some of the stuff with you in the Facebook group. Anyway, following day, you can see we had a sell off and then just chop sideways. And that was a $160 loss. Next day, we started at the low and then we took off. So that's a good day for trade trading. And this number should probably be bigger than that. The following day, you can see we had a nice route lower for most of the day. So that was a good day, 841, followed by another route. This is unusual. Usually you have a good day, then you get a choppy day. But then we finally, the choppy days finally caught up to us. You can see these two days here were choppy. Now, one thing I want to show you, and, and the reason I think going through these charts is going to help, is going to help me remember some of the things I want to want to tell you. And, and the secret to making money on this intraday stuff is not how to make the money, it's more how to keep the money, okay? <laughs> and I think that's what I hope I can kind of get to tonight. I, I have... A client of mine, he's he's kind of more of a scalper type. He does incredibly well, but then the volatility of the market changes, or maybe something in his life changes, and he tends to to blow up a little bit, and then he comes back in with a vengeance, and then he kicks ass again. So if he could just figure out how not to to blow up in between, he would be probably one of the most amazing traders on earth. Now. Just fast forwarding from December 9th, you can see we had yet another choppy day, okay? So let me just go back to the prior chart real quick. You can see choppy day, lost money, choppy day, lost money. So it's like we're quickly giving up all the money that we made. I guess I say we because I'm so used to talking in terms of the service stocks, which I make public. But you can see on that day there, I probably got faked out to the upside and then the market went, sold off hard and... I don't know if I improved upon my loss for the day by going short or not. And I'll have to go in and look at that day and see. And this is another thing I wanna to do too. And here's another one thing I wanna flesh out is every morning I wake up really early and do my morning pages as I've talked about quite a bit. And one thing that I, I find myself writing about quite a bit is what did I learn from the markets? And like lately, like how do I avoid these chop days? And I've done presentations in the past on Holy Grail days and Holy Grail day haunting. 
So go in and watch those on my YouTube channel, which is at Dave Landry, if you go to YouTube. But anyway, I, I think a lot about how to avoid these things. And then obviously when you get a loss like this, I think about the, the prior day's loss. And I think the more you can go back in and look at the charts, especially at the end of the day. Now, there's gonna be a lot of hindsight in this, but I think you can also learn a tremendous amount. For instance, this day here was mostly choppy sideways trading, and then you had a nice breakout that followed through to the upside. And the point I'm thinking about here is I've, at the end of the day, I'll look at like a daily S&P, and I'm like, holy crap, this thing opened on its low. It went up all day for the most part, why did I lose money on a day like that? And then the next day is a prime example of what I'm saying. Look at that. It opened higher, and it was almost a textbook opening gap reversal straight down, chop sideways for the remainder of the day. And this was a $700 day, which is better than a poking eye. By the way, I'm guilty of monetizing things or annualizing things, I should say, like this. And you got to be really careful of that, but you also should do it to the downside too. So $100 is roughly $25,000 a year. If you make $100 a day, that's $25,000 a, um, a year. So if you make $400 a day, that's a hundred grand. Now, if you're losing $776, what does that come to? So this is where you gotta be super careful. 776 times this 252 trading days, give or take a day. It's a hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred dollar loss. Okay. So that's 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 uh Tarzan speak bad, okay. But if you could make a few hundred dollars a day, and this is on top of the core methodologies, for instance, like today I had uh I have ROIV left over, I have a little IPO left over, and I also have nine. And those worked out nicely. The IPO went down a little bit, but the other two worked out nicely for me. And that's the longer term kind of bread and butter. But if I could see some opportunities here, provided that I could wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and on a choppy day survive, instead of losing the equivalent of $200,000 a year, then I think I might be on to something here. And you can see this day here, rallied up and then it sold off. And somehow that could have been an ugly day, but I must have gotten short late in the day on that sell-off or not get sucked in too much in the morning. You can see this day sold off for the most part, then had a rally in the afternoon. So for the most part, that was a trend day lower, $142. And this thing sold off, but then it came back. And uh, I think I probably should have done better on, day, on that day. And this is forcing me to go in and see what I did, what worked and what didn't. And I'll be happy to share these things with you as I figure them out. Now, here we have a day that sold off and then it rallied. It seems like I should have made some money on that because that was a pretty serious sell-off. The following day was pretty choppy. and somehow. I don't know how, but I made 272. Now I'm going to walk you through a day here or a couple of trades that I took today and show you how maybe I pulled that out of the hat. Almost said something else. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I'll demonetize the video at some point. But anyway, following day gap, nice route, route higher for the most part, and then choppy, choppy, choppy sideways. But it worked out. 252 better than a poke in the eye. What's that? 72,000 dollars a year if you do that every day. Now, next day was kind of cool. It sold off all morning, nice route lower, and then it rallied all afternoon. And if memory serves, I, I wrote it all the way down, I wrote it all the way up. Not always that easy, okay? But sometimes it can be. Next day, we had a sell off, we had a rally, and you could see minus 386, not such a good day. So again, the secret is figuring out how to survive those choppy days. Now, I'm just gonna go through these really quickly to get you up to speed so I can flesh out a few things and get to today's trades. You can see $190 in that day. Now, if I could have seven and $800 days and maybe a $1,000 day here and there and just lose 200 here and there, then that, that'd be great. Now, what happened here? I have no idea. So this is a day, and this is kind of the whole point of this exercise here, this part of this exercise. The whole, the whole thing I'm doing is an exercise. This has got to be exercise within the exercise. I think I grabbed the wrong coat tonight. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyway, uh, somebody's going to write a goodwill call. They want their coat back. Anyway, you can see, I don't know how I lost money on this day. And, and as I'm looking at this, this is going to force me to go in and figure it out. And then I'll make a note when, I'm, when I do the editing tomorrow, and I'll figure out what I did. But on a day like that, 
I should not have lost money. It looked like the market mostly sold off most of the day. So I have to figure out what happened. So, oh, I did put a question mark in here. So yeah, when I was putting the slides together, I'm like, WTF, right? Following day, $220. And again, this should probably be a question mark. This thing went straight up. What happened? I don't know, but I'll find out. Now, here's a day where it was kind of all over the place, but it looks like it did finally get into gear late in the day. Maybe I should have done a little bit better. I don't know. Again, maybe I need to go and look at that. But that's one of the secrets to trading is looking at what you did and then separating hindsight bias out of it. Now, there's a lot of things, and this is what I'm kind of getting to, and I don't know if the right term is, is foresight and hindsight, but there's a lot of things that were there all along that you'll see, even though obviously there's going to be hindsight at the end of the day. And a lot of these times, like, well, this, is a, this was a choppy range. It never did get out of the first 30 minute bars for the most part. What the hell was I thinking? And that's that's okay to think that. You can see this day here was probably January 3rd. Sold off, had a little rally late in the day. You know, 400 bucks better than the poking eye. And this is on again on top of everything else. But then look, comes unglued a little bit, rallies up, goes down, tries to rally, and that's the kind of day where you can kind of chase, end up chasing your own tail. Now, by the way, just getting back to like the Holy Grail Day hunting, and Holy Grail Day starts on one end and it ends on the other. In fact, right here would be a Holy Grail Day, starting here and then ending all the way up here. Uh, I'm not used to candle charts on stockcharts.com. For, for I just use this for my presentations because it gives me a nice black and white chart. Does anybody know what a black candle is on the first bar? Does that mean a gap or... And oh, by the way, on my one thing that I did with my charts is just to keep me from getting a little too caught up in everything is I took the shading out of the candles. I'm using candles. I know some of you guys are actually shocked to, to, <laughs> to hear this. I'm not looking for candle patterns, okay? I'm using candles just because they're easy to see, especially from across my office if I look it over at my trading station. And uh, but I took out the shading, so I'm not seeing the red and the green bars because a lot of times I'll see a red bar, it it'll freak me out like oh my god the the market's coming completely unglued. Okay, a black opens black candle opens higher than closes. Black candle equal closed higher. Okay, open higher than closes. So it's a gap from the prior day. I'm still slightly lost, closed higher. Okay, so it did close higher. Okay. This day here, you can see chop suey, okay? And, and look, here's your first 30 minute range. Now, this is the thing, this is one thing I wanted to point out. And I knew once I got into the charts, it would make sense. Take a look at this 30 minute bar. The low is right here. That low never really get taken, did get taken out. Now, it touched that low a little bit, right? It looks like it was coming unglued, but then it went back up, okay? And then it touched the high right here, just kind of went slightly past it. Keep in mind that a market's job is to fool you. And I know it's a kind of a weird way of putting it, but a market, and here's some adages I got from Linda Rasky, a market will do what it has to do to fool the most amount of players. And a market will often do an obvious, the obvious thing in an unobvious manner. So like the TKO is kind of the obvious thing. It's an uptrend but you have this knockout move first and we look to play that knockout move with a TKO. And we'll look at a TKO in just one second. Okay, and stock opened higher than it closed. The bottom of the bar is close of the day, but it still closed higher than the day before. Okay, I'll have to, yeah, I'm a little confused on that because it's, uh, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you though for trying to help me. Okay, so this is what we live for. Here you have a route day higher january 6 and the market just went pretty much up and i don't know if i got more than one account involved right now i'm kind of doing this on a smallish account just to see kind of s and g's what's going to happen but i may have gotten some of my other accounts involved with this on this particular day because things look good i have some cash accounts retirement type of stuff where I can't use margin. So if I'm if I'm making a lot of trades, I, I need a lot of margin to do what I need to do because it adds up quickly. 
And if you're doing this in a cash account because of the T plus two or T plus three rule, and I'm always confused how that shakes out, you let's say you 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 uh, you use fifty thousand dollars in margin doing these trades. Well, that fifty thousand dollars, even if you're flat at the end of the day, is tied up for several days. So when I'm getting cash accounts involved, I got to be careful that it's a really good trend day, and I'm not going to be in and out a couple times or chasing my own tail. And ideally, on a day like today, like on um, like this day, I should say the six. What happens is, and I'll, I'll walk you through a couple in just one minute. I have the entry stop entry order, and then I have an initial profit target, and then I have an automated trailing stop. And if that initial profit target is hit, then all I have to do is a few minutes before the close, I have a alarm that goes off, is set a market on close order. And that'll make sense in just one second. But anyway, so here's here's the this any idiot could trade this day. Okay, this is a trend following moron day right here. It's when you have a day like this where the whole day nearly is stuck within this first bar, then it's like draw a line from here to here, draw a line from here to here, and then obviously the bars have to fill in during the day. But until unless this gets taken out in a meaningful way, sit on your hands. And you know maybe 249, maybe that's not bad given the conditions of the market on that day, but it sure would have been nice not to do anything. So obviously this is what we live for. Now, again, if you go in and watch that HG day hunting, I talked about a lot of things. You know, maybe you could look to see if the market overall is set up on a particular day. Like, for instance, going into tomorrow, I'm going to show you some VIX stuff in just a minute, and the market's very overbought. So we're due to have a correction tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow is going to be one of those days that's kind of set up for a sharp sell-off and it's maybe not worth playing the long side i had a hard time playing the long side today with vix's stretch as it as it was and somehow i did okay and i'll show you that in one second all right just to keep keep on keeping on you can see 858 we did we did stall out but we had a pretty nice rally most of the morning and then we sold off all the afternoon so that worked out pretty good following day chop 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 and then finally we kind of began to trend a little bit. By the way, one part of the, one something I've been researching lately a little bit is when these real bodies stack on top of each other. I don't know if you guys have done anything there, but it also, it's the same thing as persistency too, okay? But it seems like when you get the real bodies stacking on top of each other, there's definitely something there. I just can't figure out a way to monetize it just yet. I don't know if it could be mechanized, but we'll see. Now, the following day, you could see a pretty good day. And again, here's your 30-minute range. This is an inside bar on that. We tried to break down. The obvious thing here was like, okay, we've got an opening gap reversal. We gap higher. We're going to come back in and fill this gap. But what did the market do? The market faked out higher. So even if you played this and maybe lost a little money, when it starts going back up, you stop out. You dust yourself off. You say, okay, let me draw my line going back to the high of the morning. And it's like it goes all the way until afternoon before we start to break out. Maybe wait to see if that's a real breakout. So it's like, okay, you're not going to fool me twice, right? You fooled me here, and then you fooled me here. Aha, you came right back in. And then maybe the real move is after you come back in after that false breakout, which you don't know is a false breakout at the time. So it's something to kind of consider. And another thing I'm kind of noodling with is like after so many fake outs, you get the real trend. And that's something I haven't mechanized yet, but it's something that I'm watching. And, and the more fake outs that you can miss, the closer you are to capturing a big trend. So you can see it kind of gapped open, kind of faked out to the downside, faked out to the upside. Now, I'm not saying wait the full 30 minutes, but let's just kind of let it open and see what happens okay and then here's another fake out to the downside then finally again we got the uptrend now today turned out pretty good and i actually fudged up and this number should be about twice that number you know what would the world be without hypothetical questions but this number should be much 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 bigger because and i don't i don't know if i'm ready to admit my fudge up but i 
I doubled up on an order that I was looking to exit. And in, it, it, like an idiot, instead of just getting out, once I realized the error of mistakes, I was uh, mistakes. I was positive on the trade. It was a quick little pop, and I decided that uh, you know what, it it wasn't something that was planned. It was an off the cuff trade. Let me get out, and I ended up doubling up on the trade. And then I tried to do all kinds of things, hedging, and all kind of stupid stuff that I preach against. And with the the irony of the thing is, if I would have followed through with the with the hedge that I did, so to speak, I, I ended up double short, double long puts, and then I ended up buying stock against the puts because I had a stop out if it if the stock imploded. But instead of just closing my eyes and letting the stock run three or four points like it did and making back all that money and then some, I micromanaged it and in the process of doing that, and, and I'm just admitting that I'm human, and, and believe me, I'm really human. Uh, I get very angry, and I'm and I'm way too emotional to be a trader. But when I saw the opportunities that I missed because I was messing around with this this um, the stock, as opposed to just getting out and taking my lumps, so it, it wasn't so much the money I lost; it was the the opportunity cost. Brian's asking, are you trading a, trading a stop or just a middle one? Uh, I'm actually trading a stop, okay? And I'll show you a couple things in a few minutes. I like to, to use an automated trailing stop. I think that's one of the greatest inventions ever. And especially, you know, let's, let's say you get in here and you got a stop down here and it's a trailing stop, you got an IPT up here somewhere, and you just let it go. Now, by the way, I don't want to make it look like I'm just trading the spiders on these days. I'm going to show you some individual stocks and ETFs that I traded in just a minute or ETFs for this presentation. But if you're looking at the spiders and you have a day that looks like this or a day that looks even a day that looks like this, you should you should have made money on that day. And if it just chops sideways within that first 30 minute bar, if it's mostly inside bars, inside range, then it's a day where you probably shouldn't have done a whole lot of trade. So yeah, Brian, I really like those um, automated trailing stops. And sometimes what you could do, I'm gonna show you a Beto trade here in just one second, but something like Beto that, that could be really low in volatility at times, at times, but then explode, you could go in and use like a 10 cent stop, okay? And if you stopped out, yeah, you lose 10 cents, you know, you, you live to fight another day, you might get pissed off, but you're, you're gonna be okay. But if it takes off, then you could open up that stop to maybe 20 or 30 cents, and then you could take some partial profits, and it could work out really nicely. Now, what I like to do is look at a daily chart, and these are my four favorite ETFs I like to look at. And again, this thing is a work in progress, and, and I think as traders, we're always a work in progress, but this specific project, this specific experiment, is really a work in project a process and the money today was made on lab u and i did take that in a cash account which that kind of helped that number out a little bit okay because i think i only made like 500 dollars in my experiment account and that would have been two or three times bigger as i just said had i not budged up it got caught up in that and that's the mental game of trading it's like it knocked me it knocked me off my game instead of shaking it off accidenting it Instead of losing, you know, was there 500 bucks or whatever in a trade, I lost much more than that as I just had an opportunity cost. But anyway, so obviously you can see this this lab you broke out and followed through nicely. And you can say, well, Dave, how do you know it was going to follow through? Well, you didn't, but it kept on kept on keeping on, so it looked pretty good. And then Gush looked okay. I also played Gush today. I left J Nug alone. J Nug could get a little crazy at times, and then. I might have got caught up in it, but it was just kind of a, a, a kind of a it went straight down, went straight up. It's kind of all over the place. Jackie Mason stock, and then semiconductors were so-so. They sold off a little bit, but then then they then they began to rally. But the reason I'm showing you this is if you could figure out how to get that one wide range bar out of these four ETFs, and then possibly add in a few more thicker ETFs. I have a relative strength sort that I keep up all day with the ETFs on. And I like to look at that to see what's doing well. And LabVIEW was high in that list all day, obviously. So 
it, it reminds me like, okay, if I want to be long on ETF, which ETF do I want to be long? And you don't necessarily trade this purely on a mechanical basis. Although if we get into a nice bull market, you might be able to do this, okay? On a purely mechanical basis, mostly mechanical, I should say, but following that RS. And I'll show you the RS and, and, the, and the shit coins here in just one second, SHYT. But anyway, you want to try to get into that strong, to the strongest one, and then decide whether you want to be in more than one. And then also kind of factor in what's going on in the overall market. And today was sort of choppy, although it was kind of strong, it was kind of choppy. And then we're also dealing with the overextended VIX situation, which could cause the market or could help the market reverse fairly soon. Especially because it's so, did I say oversold, overbought is what I meant to say. Okay. Now, another thing that was happening today was Bitcoin has been really strong. And you can see it took off, it began to take off, I should say, today. Initially, it looked like it was going to fake out higher, but then it, it gained its footing and it really took off. So I knew that these cryptos after that first fake out might be worth a shot. And I played Beto, but I, I didn't get Mara or Riot or some of those cheap, even cheaper ones that I have in my crypto list. Again, because I was too caught up by being thrown off my game in this. And that's something that I'm, maybe I'm not fully prepared to do. And that's why we'll see how this experiment goes. But so far, it's been working out okay. So along those lines... Uh, before we get to that, let me just show you the, the lab You Go back to that real quick. So this was a lab you trade today. On that breakout, and you can see it did kind of break out here. This is 30 minutes, right? Sold off pretty hard. Looks like lab D would be to play. Nope, but turn around right back up. Okay, so it's breaking out, but I'm going to wait for some confirmation. So I waited for confirmation on this bar here. It looked like it was going to the moon. Unfortunately, it didn't go straight up, but I had a stop in place. And Brian was asking earlier, is it a fixed stop? Is it a middle stop? No, it's a trailing stop, okay? So in this case, it was uh, 30 cents is a good round number to use on something like LabVIEW. And then when you're up 30 cents, you wanna flip out half. Now in this case, I might've exited just a tad bit early and that's where the discretion comes in. It was getting close to that. It was a few cents away and bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. And it just felt like it was a gift horse. But in this particular case, so flipped out half and then exited 500 market on close. And here's the trades from this active account that I trade where I have margin. And then you could see 750. So I got 25 cents on the first one. And then what's that? 75 cents on the second loaf. And 500 bucks on a trade, better than the poke in the eye. What's that? Um, 125,000 a year if you do it every day. If you lose it every day, you lose $125,000, obviously. <laughs> My wife, what's that thing you do? Annualizing. Okay, so getting back to the Bitcoin, this is the one I wanted to show you. By the way, Bitcoin, uh, if you're if you're trading uh, Beto, which is based on futures, you're going to have a contango problem. And the best way to explain that is there's going to be a constant decay because this is based on the future price. And I think, I don't know how interest rates, maybe somebody smarter than me could explain this to me, but I think that if interest rates are higher, then the contango is, is gonna be even worse. Your decay is gonna be even worse. The point I'm trying to make is if you buy these ETFs, which are derivative of a derivative, okay? ETFs are derivative of something and that something itself is actually a derivative, okay? Then it gets tricky really fast, especially if you're doing something like a VIX futures, which is a derivative, an ETF is a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. So it's a, uh, is it third order derivative or third derivative? Anyway, it gets really complicated fast. Don't hold, anything ETF futures overnight. And then I would also caution you, don't hold short stuff overnight because there's a, a really bad decay problem there because let's say you're in the muddy and it goes up 
and then they're forced to go in and buy or short more stock and it has kind of a reverse martingale kind of scheme to it or something the way it works or whatever for lack of a better word so all one way to remember this is all of the um all of these inverse etfs will eventually go to zero okay all right so let's take a look at so we know that bitcoin is reversing it looked like it was gonna it was weak in the morning but then it began to firm up so i picked up a thousand here and as i was alluding to earlier in a case like this it's like okay this thing's breaking out i can risk like 10 cents and just put a stop in down here a, a trailing stop and if it goes up and i'm up about 20 cents or more i could open up that trailing stop and then i could start looking to take an ipt and then in this case i actually set an ipt once it began to take off so something like the lab U or gosh or some of these other things i'll actually use a stop entry order and when i get triggered in i'll put in a trailing stop immediately on half and then i'll put in an ipt immediately on half and try and try is a key word i'll try to go about my life anyway so i was up 25 cents i think or so on this which is better than the poke in the eye it was a quick hundred bucks so it's like you know what let me just take that and then uh the i'll let the trailing stop work on the remainder and I got stopped out of the remainder. Now, what I didn't do, and it's so funny as a trader, you're not like, wow, I made some money. It's more like, damn, I could have made more money, you know? <laughs> but what I didn't do, which I do on an interday basis, and I'll show you one in just one second. But once I get that initial profit target out, I'm like, okay, I've got a trend here, but I'm gonna try to position myself to ride up that trend as long as possible. So I want to be in this trend until the close, ideally, provided, of course, it continues to move in my favor. So what I will do, in this case, it was like 25 cents, and you can see I got knocked out. Once this volatility begins to expand like this and price gets a little higher, maybe open up that stop a little bit so you can possibly withstand a little bit of a correction. And then again, you can see real tight stop, and then that trailing stop kicked in, and then it got knocked out right there. I'm not complaining. It's better than a poke in the eye, right? So you can see there's the trades right there, 11.55, 11.75, 20 cents in this case, only 100 bucks, but better than the poke in the eye. Again, this was something that was very small risk, and I didn't know it was going to keep on keeping on. So I said, you know what, give me 100 bucks, and then we'll trail a stop in the remainder. Now you have to be careful not to eat like a bird and defecate like an elephant, but in this case, I was only risking 10 cents, and I was 20 cents ahead. It's like, you know what? worth taking half and then i could free roll on the remainder so that came to 251 bucks better than poking the eye 50 000, 50 000, dollars a year i think <laughs> all right speaking of free rolling is it worth it ah uh, well i tell you my shoulders are tense right now um you know, one of those days, I remember that 851 day dollar day. I felt like I felt like I was down thousands. Okay, uh, I'm probably too old for this, <laughs> you know, and that's why I'm trying to work toward um, more of an intraday trend trading. I mean, I've always been since day one. I've always been fascinated with some sort of intraday trend trading, and I've dabbled with it here and there. But I'm just trying to get more consistent at doing this. And I think it's worth it. And the the big caveat, and I'm going to flesh these things out over time, but the big caveat is, as I said earlier, figuring out how to not lose money in the meantime and how to not chase your own tail. And I probably can't keep up this pace forever, you know. And then it's like when you you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So it's like. I have less time to work on presentations and 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 some of the other stuff, less time for other research. And so, you know, is it worth it? It might be, okay? But right, right, you'd rather not be chained. I think you're right, Brian. I think you're on something there. So if you look at some of the presentations I did maybe a few years ago where I did the opening gap reversals and even some of the stuff I'm doing here, it was a lot more hands off you know so i think you can watch the open and do opening gap reversals 
and just but you're gonna have to wait for them i haven't had an opening gap reversal in months and i think that if i waited and waited and waited and waited and waited i would finally get the one finally get the the, the big one so to speak maybe figure out a way to okay i'm gonna watch the open i'm, I'm gonna trade maybe for an hour and then i'm gonna go out and and have a life but yeah i do I do miss the life that I used to have. Of course, now I, I used to do this and then go to the gym. And, you know, now I go to the gym early before the market opens every day. So I do miss, I do miss that break in the middle of the day, going to the gym, uh, getting out, getting some fresh air, getting outside, whatever, going for a bike ride. And so it, it, it is a, it comes with a cost. Obviously, everything comes with a cost. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> If I dropped dead to the heart attack, no, it was not worth it. All right, secret to trading, success is free rolling. And this is something that I'm really excited about. And I've been doing this since um, since probably forever, since you guys, um, late 90s or whatever, mid 90s actually. So free rolling came from Charlie Kirk when I was down in St. Lucia. He was kind enough to have me as his guest of honor, as I've said many times. So I'm very proud of that. And I got to meet some wonderful people. And it was a great experience. And maybe one day we'll do a little retreat. One of you guys has a very nice place in Hilton Head and said maybe in the off season we can get together and do something. If we could figure out a way to, to do it to where we could just break even just for expenses, I'd be willing to do that just because I think it'd be fun to get everybody together. Anyway, where was I going with this? Uh, but the free the free rolling thing is the is the secret. So Charlie Kirk, after showing the money management, my money management, he called it free rolling. And I've had a few people over the years that actually thought it was pretty cool the way I actually let that volatility open up. And and that's one of the secrets to trading. Longer term trading, your results are going to be are going to be iffy because your drawdowns are going to be abysmal and your accuracy is going to be really poor. And as I've said a thousand times, and I, I learned this through a lot of mechanical testing and through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But you're only going to be right about 28% of the time trying to capture capture these longer term trends. So something like this nine you got about a 28% chance of capturing longer term trends. So the odds are about 72% against you. I know statistics are worthless. 74.3% of all people know that. But anyway, but if you could get in for a short term swing trade, take a piece off and then trail that stop and let that stop loosen up, that's the secret to trading. And time and time again, not that the Grand Poo Bar, but I was looking at some records today and somebody said uh, i couldn't make any money with your service and you know i didn't want to berate the guy but it's as usual it's kind of like did you get nine and and you know of course they didn't get nine it's like well they, yeah but i got those turds you recommend it's like well that's the problem is every now and then you have an outlier or two and we had uh i forget what arlp was three or four hundred percent and we had one that was prior to that one was like five hundred percent but in between yeah they required a few losses and that's usually what happens is people don't get the big winners and they end up with with losing trades and and i have a a lot of notes i gotta find them i'm been digging for them i'm just gonna have to find them by accident when going through all my it's in a digital notebook so i know i know i captured it but i have a lot of notes on people people ask me which what exactly should i expect with the trading service and my answer is i don't know but the bottom line is, is the same thing you should expect if you're trend trading, okay, expect to spend a lot of time less wealthy expect, because these great trends don't come along every day. Expect to spend a lot of time waiting, okay? Expect to give up in frustration right before Big Dave picks the next big winners, you know? It's just, it just comes with the territory. And there's a lot of things that if I could solve for, You'd never see my fat ass again, such as the streaky nature. You just print money sometimes, and then other times you can't hit the side of the barn. And, and I think it was, um, I want to say Brian Gelber once said, paraphrasing, three months of the year, you're hot. You're so hot, you can't sleep at night. 
three months out of the year, you're cold, you're so cold, you wonder if you're ever going to get another trade. And then the rest of six months, you win a little, make a little, lose a little, make a little, you know, wondering wondering if you're ever going to be consistent. So that's one thing that I, I want to bring out more and more is that one, trading isn't hard, but it's far from easy. Okay. And and this, like a, this set, setup we're looking at here is kind of a textbook type of setup. I mean, it's almost, it's almost absolutely perfect. And someone earlier on Facebook was asking me to do like trade reviews. And I thought it was a great idea, but I realized that I'm kind of doing trade reviews as I go through these. And if you look at the last couple of, uh, especially like my Trading Simplified shows, and you can find them on my website, DaveLearner.com, you'll see that a lot of cases, I actually went back to square one and said, this is why I picked this stock. This is why I like it. And if you go in and look at all the mystery charts, usually in the walkthrough, at least I hope I did, I, I tell you why it, I like the setup, and that's ahead of time. The mystery charts haven't triggered yet, so you can see without any hindsight whatsoever. But anyway, so here's a trade. You can see the parameters are down below. I clipped off my spreadsheet. This was the entry. This was a stop. This was the initial profit target, and this was a risk, and it was a TKO. So let's take a look at that. So you can see that this was in a persistent trend. Persistency is one of the best things out there and what's amazing is it even works on fewer bars and it even works on an intraday basis look for that persistency and that just means that the stock tends to go up day after day after day after day after day and you could draw a line through the bars it, it intersects as many as possible and when you get persistency and acceleration okay so it's kind of like first gear and then second gear and then you get a nice knockout move like we did now keep in mind and there's not enough time to get into it tonight but the trend knockout and everything i do for that matter there's no hocus pocus or mumbo jumbo or third order derivative it's all reading the psychology of the market so in the tko and i've spent a lot of time talking about this but just real quick, it knocks out the nervous Nellies, the those the Johnny Come Latelys, those people that are buying just because this thing is going up. And usually they have very little staying power, they're emotional, and they could kill you if they dump their shares. And a lot of them, so to speak, begin dumping their shares. Shorts also pile on when this happens. And the predict predicament of these traders can often help you to, to get a really good trade. Now this one didn't take off right away and that's where patience come, comes in. And I don't wanna put out a post and say, hey, who who uh, micromanaged himself out of nine? Because I guarantee you a lot of people did. And you know what? I probably would have given up on this stock had I not had a trading service where I recommended the stock. And you know what? It's actually helped my own trading from a selfish standpoint on my other trades that are outside the trading service I'm kind of like, well, if this was in my service and I was telling other people to do, or if somebody was looking over my shoulder, and that's an exercise that I'd recommend too. Pretend somebody's actually looking over your shoulder, or you're going to have to report your actions to someone else. Hold yourself accountable. And that's the kind of way I look at it. I pretend like, okay, everybody's seeing everything I'm doing, so don't act like an idiot. Today, notwithstanding, that doesn't count, okay? <laughs> But anyway, you can see nice little TKO move. Entry was here, kind of a textbook TKO. Enter above the high, stop out a little bit below the low. And you can see it triggered and it didn't do a whole lot for a while. It's about two weeks worth of trading where you're underwater and you're really questioning your sanity in this particular case. And then our IPT was up here. You can see it finally hit it and then we trail a stop higher. Now, this isn't exactly the scale. I used to measure this and spend hours trying to draw a, a, um, a trailing stop. And if you want to go in and see exactly where they were on each day, and I'll update the archives tomorrow, but you can see this actual trade. If you go to daylearn.com slash archives, and you can see the day I recommended this trade. That was that recommendation down below that I just showed you. In fact, I personally went to the archives right before the show and did a screen capture on that just so I would have the parameters. But this stock, this uh, this stop isn't to scale, but for the most part, you can see it didn't go anywhere until the stock started moving in our favor. Then we start trailing the stop higher. We don't trail it higher when the market retraces. 
we only trail it higher once again when the market takes off. So today was the first day. This kind of quantum jump is just really should just be today. This should be a little flatter to here and then takes off again based on today's action. Okay. Wow, thank you. Okay. So uh, Brian said he joined in September and ROIV and nine have put me in the black for the trading service. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, and expect expect to go six to eight months and 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 not be so happy. You know, <laughs> that's the hard part. But it helps if you have something a big winner in there, like ARLP covered our butts quite a bit. I forget how much it was, but it was an extra probably made like a twenty percent difference over the entire year, like twenty thousand dollar difference on a hypothetical hundred k account. Although I do actually take the trades i did show those trades i think i did them either a few weeks back or in whenever it stopped out i showed the trades the actual trades but that one people who joined the service and took that trade and held that trade for two years were way ahead of the game while they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the next big winner to come along and you know trend trading is tough but it's the only way to make money now, getting back to the free rolling, if we go back to the lab you trade, you can see once you get that initial profit target out, okay, let's say we were trailing at, I think, 30 cents in this case, okay, so 30 cents is $150 on 1,000 shares, and then the stop will automatically come to break even when that IPT is hit. I, I don't have the scaling exactly right on here, but you get the idea. And then this is where you go about your life. So this is where Brian can go to the gym or go have lunch with his significant other or ride a bike or whatever he likes to do. And technically that's what I should do too, especially on a day like this where I kept looking at it thinking, oh man, this thing's gonna run out of steam, it's gonna run out of steam. And you know what helped keep me in it, honestly, is knowing that I would have to report this tonight and I wanted to show that I held this stock until the close and wasn't stopped out until the close, or I was stopped out. Stopped out, stopped out. But I wanted to try to see if I could hold it to the close so I'd have a good example for today. I try to always, I think I trade better on Thursdays knowing that I'm probably gonna report some of those trades back to you guys. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching ROV and nine go higher just before leaving for an activity. Yeah, it doesn't always work that way. You know, if it did, you'd never see my fat ass again. So here's some more free rolling. This was one I talked about earlier, uh, January 2nd. You can see uh, this is uh, one of the shit coins. And then I followed it up. And you can see this was another post that I did in, in Facebook. So it did hit the IPT. And then now I'm free rolling on that. Um, the the beauty of crypto, and I need to, I, I need to start writing about this. It's something that I've, I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's a total bullshit market, okay? You know, I don't want to get in an argument with somebody like, oh, it's just made up. Well, yeah, it's made up. Who cares? That's the beauty of it. That's the freaking beauty of it. The beauty of it is it trades purely on emotions, okay? And we're trading traders, not markets. And there's a lot of greater fools in the crypto market. And when the crypto market heats up, you can print a lot of money. You can also lose a lot of money, okay? So make sure you're using serious money management to where something like this, hey, I got my IPT out of this, I'm trailing a stop. And on a lot of these, I just look for 20% on IPT. I'm not splitting hairs and looking at volatility and all other stuff that I probably should be. I'm just putting in a 20% IPT. And if it gets hit, then I'm at break even on the remainder. And then I go in as time allows and adjust the stops higher. I don't know if there's any crypto brokerages that'll let you do the automated stops. Uh, sometimes those could be problematic because you'll get a spike. I, I've had it happen to me a lot in Forex where you get a spike higher and the stop goes straight up and then you get stopped out and then the thing takes off without you. So that could be a problem. But right now I'm just setting a limit order for the IPT, 20% higher. And then I got a break even, I'm sorry, I'm at a, I have a stop below the market. So in a case like this, stop would probably be down here somewhere down below this pullback, okay? Give it a little wiggle room. Once that IPT is hit, my stop is at the entry. And if it keeps going higher, then I trail the stop higher. So that's another case of free rolling. 
All right, I want to just spend a minute doing this. We talked about this earlier this week. So one thing that was kind of cool, that's kind of cool about the TFM 10% system is it doesn't really have lag getting you out of a market because you're not waiting for a moving average, a crossover, all these things to happen. You're just looking for a price drop, okay? A, a price drop below the 50 simple moving average and also 10% off of its high, okay? So if you look at the parameters back here, this line is drawn at 90% of the 50. In this case, we're on a weekly chart, week closing high. That's all it is. And my thinking there is if a market's going to drop 50%, it has to drop 10% first. And 10% is a good round number for the S&P 500. And that's how I came up with that line. And it's a simple little system. And one thing that was kind of by accident is that it does have like lag built in to get you back into a market. And if you have a V-shaped recovery, that doesn't really work. But if you have a prolonged bear market like we've been in since the beginning of 2022, then it takes a while to catch up with price because it's looking back 50 weeks, okay? So now that we've been in this thing for 50 weeks, you can see the buy line, as I often call it, is starting to drop. So now we just need a close above the buy line and two lows at least above the 50 simple moving average. So we're getting closer to a buy signal and we could get a signal within the next month to six weeks. Let's just see what happens, okay? Now, this is something that I was showing my stock charts peeps. This is the ACP plugin. If you like this video, like the video, and then you get the plugin for free down here. Maybe one day I'll charge for it, but right now it's free. You can see we had green for most of 2021. It's a pretty amazing bull run, okay? And this green is just 30 EMA on a weekly chart. And that just means the lows are greater than the moving average. It just, just counts the number of weeks or days or five minute bars or one minute bars that the lows are greater than the moving average. Pick your favorite moving average. Here's what's kind of fascinating, and I know I'm a nerd. That daylight came to an end early in 2022, within the with first or second week of 2022. And then that goes back to zero because it's counting the number of bars, okay? And then we had one upside bar on the S&P, of Landry Light and what happened? We got no follow through the upside. We didn't have any follow through the upside in case my wife is watching, correcting my grammar. And then you can see right here, we had another one week of upside Landry Light, but that was it. So it's pretty amazing. If you zoom it in, you can see it a little bit better. Okay, we had that one week where it looks like, hey, everything's gonna be fine. Okay, but notice that that high was never taken out. Okay, so if you do get all excited because you have one bar that looks good, then just say, well, show me, okay? See if you can follow through before getting me too excited, before I get too excited. Right here, here's your, here's your other bar of the Landry Light, okay? And once again, no follow through, okay? So you can have the greatest indicator in the world. Just make sure you look at the chart and see if you're getting follow through. Okay, I want to jump into crypto. And then also want to jump into, let me just get the VIX set up real quick because I don't want to forget to do that. It's something very important I want to show you with the VIX. So let me get that research set up. All right. And then we're going to hop over to crypto. And if you have any, uh, if you want to start asking about individual stocks, please do so now or start now. And then... Um, We'll get to them first chance. All right, let's go back to a daily chart on crypto. So here's Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, let's see if I can, okay, here we go. Bitcoin is looking pretty good all of a sudden. Now it does have a lot of overhead supply. And one thing I wanted to point out to you guys and girls is, um, 
Greg Schnell and I were on a bull bear debate and the market was Bitcoin. And that's back when, oh, that was way back in October or whatever, we had downside Landry light and just looked sideways at best. So I took the bear side, he took the bull side. And I didn't know you were allowed to use caveats, but he, his caveat was that, that the S&P would have to improve, which I thought was pretty brilliant. And these markets are really correlated. You've seen me do that correlation analysis before. We, we lay one on top of the other. You could do that with uh, stock charts, like the original stock charts. You could do that with the, the with their original platform. And that's a pretty cool thing. And what's amazing is it's almost like the two markets are, are 100% positively correlated. If stocks go up, Bitcoin goes up. If stocks go down, Bitcoin go da goes down. And Greg was kind of playing, I mean, I've done a lot of presentations on that in the past, but Greg kind of took it one step further and was saying that it's speculation coming into a market or speculation coming out of a market. So right now, Bitcoin's hot. These, these Bitcoin stocks, uh, such as Myra and Riot, and there's a few other penny stocks or cheaper stocks out there. Like one of them was up 65% today. And, you know, what would the world be without hypothetical questions, uh, said Mr. Wright. But I have to think that I would have seen it had I not been stressing out over a fat finger, you know? Anyway, where's the VAI? There's a VAI trade, you can see. Kind of consolidating in here. I don't know where my stop is, but we got in, or I got in, I should say, way back here. So it's 100%, looks like about 100% change move so far. When these things go, they can really go. But anyway, Bitcoin, you can see waking up in here. So that's a good thing. Mountains and mountains of overhead supply, but let's see if we can plow through it. So far, it's pushing pretty hard. Ethereum has been doing pretty good too. You can see Ethereum pretty strong in here. Ethereum versus Bitcoin. It had been outperforming Bitcoin, but you can see it started to come back in. Now, let me show you something just real quick. And this is some, when this when this works, and I don't know if we're there yet, and I haven't paid enough attention to it, again, maybe because I was pissed off because I fat fingered some stuff. But when these Bitcoin, these uh, cryptos really take off, it's not like old people, everything's Bitcoin. <laughs> when these shit coins really take off, sometimes you could just go in and buy the strongest pairs, like that joke. Well, that's that's not a Bitcoin, but a, a crypto. But you can see, you know, it's GNO. It's kind of pulling away from the moving average, beginning to take off. And the uh, my day just flipped over, so this these numbers aren't nearly as impressive as they were when I was putting the show together. But sometimes you could just go through this and and maybe look for some patterns. And sometimes these things just take off. Sometimes something is simple. I don't know how thin this one is, but like the, the 230 EMA, that might be something to look for, the 230 EMA system. And you can get that off my um, YouTube channel. See, like there's another case right here. You see you've got a couple of lows greater than the moving averages. This looks like it's trying to break out from really low levels. You got some overhead way up here, but eh, you know, it's so far away. Who cares, right? Anyway, so just go through these RS scans, start paying attention to crypto. Again, don't bet your life savings, okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, you know, I trust these exchanges about as far as I could throw them. I use one of my exchanges is in the Seychelles. I doubt if you went there, if it'd actually be there, but you kind of get the idea. I don't have a lot of money in that one. I don't have a lot of money in any of them. But my thinking is these things go, they can go to where you could parlay some cash. And you know, if you if you believe in the little hodling, if you make some money, then 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 move it over to your hardware wallet so you actually you have it and that way the exchange when exchange blows up. Did I say when? Yeah, when I guess. <laughs> you don't lose all your money. All right. Uh let me just show you the VIX research real quick. And I added a new line in this week, or since the last show, I should say a couple of weeks ago. And it's the the low, I added the low in too. And I've done a complete presentation just on this. So I'm not gonna bore you too late, huh? <laughs> but what we're looking for is a stretched situation, okay? And then this is the S&P in the background, okay? So you can see when it gets stretched, like it started to get stretched here, got really stretched here. 
you tend to get a reversion to the mean move in the S&P 500, okay? The upside reversion to the mean move can be really, really big in both the VIX and in the market itself. So this is the S&P 500. We're overbought in here. This VIX is stretched. And if you look at the formulas, this is the close. The cyan is the close. And I added the low to it too recently. And the reason I added the low is I'm wondering if intraday, when we dip below 10%, is there a possible pop that can happen intraday? And that actually had me a little nervous all day when this low dipped below 10%. I was thinking, okay, is that the beginning of, of some sort of corrective action? But anyway, we are stretched again, 10% away from the 10 simple moving average, okay? That's all you need to know. If you're 10% to the downside, the market tends to sell off. If you're 10% to the upside, the market tends to rally, okay? So that's all I wanna show you there. Any questions on that? I know I kind of went through it pretty quick. All right, let's just take a look at the market real quick, and then we'll drill down to some sector action. S&P 500, kind of all over the place. Ryan, if you don't mind, could you uh, put those symbols in one at a time so I could delete them? Because otherwise, I might not catch, I might not get through all of them, okay? So yeah, one at a time, and then I'll, uh, if you don't mind. You, you don't have to do it now. I'll try to pay attention, but uh, in the future. Okay, S&P 500, right at the 280 simple moving average. Nothing magical about any of these moving averages, but as you can see, it does or can help to keep you on the right side of the market. We got thwarted there once or twice. So I, I think this market is bottoming, and, and some people confuse that with me saying it's a bottom. No, I think it's bottoming. It's a process, okay? And it's sort of a head and shoulders type of bottom. I prefer when the right shoulder is lower than the left for a bottom, and that's because it shakes out more people. More people think it's going back to old lows, and then they bail out. Thank you, Brian. So anyway, just want to point that out. Longer term downtrend, short term immediate term. I think we're trying to bottom out in here. One day at a time, though. Let's take a look at bonds while we're here. Bonds, I'm glad bonds aren't going down in a route anymore like they were. Still in a longer term downtrend, but it looks like bonds are beginning to rally a little bit, especially today. And maybe bonds are thinking that inflation will be under control and then we don't have to worry about rates as much once bonds start to rally. Take a look at the dollar. The dollar seems to be inversely correlated with stocks. This doesn't always happen. Intermarket technical analysis only matters when it matters. Write that down. As I say, ad nauseum. But you can see, pretty serious slide. That's a big slide for the dollar for this ETF, as you can see. So dollar has topped out obviously and rolled over and we've been talking about the top here forever. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ kind of has a double bottom to it. We're, we're back above the 50 with today's action. We still have a ways to go to get above that 200, but it's improving nonetheless. Let's take a look at the Rusty, the Russell 2000. Rusty had a really, really good day. And this is something I didn't even notice. Let me take a look at the, the let me see if I could do it on the fly. See, it's 30 minute chart. So yeah, look at that. You had a nice, is that today? Yeah, a little fake out on the open and then bam, off to the races for the remainder of the day. I didn't even see that during the day. And this is at the end of the day, I'm like, damn it. I totally didn't see this nice move in the Russell. Now, some people argue, I guess it's January effect, but the uh, smaller cap stocks tend to outperform bigger cap stocks. I wouldn't bet my life on that, but looks like that's how it's playing out so far with this Russell rallying, okay? But yeah, kind of a multiple, uh, kind of a complex head and shoulder bottom, lots of, a um, couple of heads and a couple of shoulders, but nice bottoming process on the rusty. Metals and mining. Off to the races. Look at that. So far, so good. Fantastic. Okay. Brand new highs today. Not too far from all time highs. Way, 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 way overbought. Okay. So be careful. But on pullbacks, we should see some nice setups there. I think the C and X, which we got knocked out of, mother, father, has been uh, trying to rally as of late. That looks like a bigger picture bottom there. So keep an eye on that one longer term. Maybe something will shake up, shape up. 
Energies finally took off again. It, they lost steam in here. They're kind of chopping back and forth, but they're not too far away from all-time highs. I sure would like to see them take off and not be so wide and loose. A lot of individual areas beginning to wake up. Banks are kind of going straight up off that 200. Financials are kind of going straight up after cutting through that 200. So that's certainly a good thing. Real estate's been rallying as of late, still below the 200 though. Drugs, longer term, have been doing pretty good in here, not too far away from all-time highs. It's good to see some areas like drugs and energies hanging in there because sometimes you're, or often your prior leaders, like especially in the bear market, become laggards. But so far, they're still working pretty good. Biotech's waking up a little bit in here. Good to see. Nice little rally above that 50 and also above the 200. And you have a golden cross with the 50 over the 200. Still has its work cut out for it. Still has a lot of overhead supply, but certainly improving nonetheless. Let's take a look at semis real quick, and we'll wrap this up and get to your stock picks. Nice little two-bar Landry light above the 200-day moving average. It's plowed through most of this overhead supply like butter. So semiconductors looking better and better and better. Check back often, though. You know, a few big, ugly down days and everything changes. All right, let's take a look at CTSH. Let me get a clear chart here. You're looking to go long. Yeah, it's enough for me to do. This is wide and loose, okay? I would I would, I would, would avoid this. You get a big gap down, and then it went up, and then it's held off, and then it's up again. You know, maybe if it begins to trend or continues to trend and shapes up, shape up, I would, but I would leave that one alone for now, okay? By the way, intermarket analysis matters now. The dollar USD should be on everyone's screen. Craig, I agree with you 100%. Craig's been with me forever through good times and bad. <laughs> Thank you, Craig, for being a long-term client and putting up with me, geez. Um, this one's okay, but then look at the mountain of overhead supply you have, and then you also have a big gap down. So this stock just has a lot of memories. You wanna find something, it's it's good to find stuff coming off of lows like this, but find stuff that doesn't have a lot of overhead supply, Brian, okay? Let's take a look at Med. Yeah, same thing going on with Med, okay? You've got not so much overhead supply. That's a ways away, but it's still a problem. And you got a big gap down. Am I thinking a lot of times in a case like this is that you've got so many bad memories as this thing begins to rally, people might not wait to get all the way back to break even. They might start getting out of that. So I'd leave that alone. So basically, you said this nine went up like this. And then a TKO move. That's the kind of stocks you want to look for. And then stuff that's bottoming, even though it didn't work, I keep coming back to the CENX. Okay. This was a little wide and loose, but it is a metals and mining. It's kind of a big fat cup and handle type of bottom. That's the kind of stuff you want to look for. You also want to look for bow ties and things like that. Okay. I think this one, this one's kind of wide and loose, but as far as bow tie is concerned, but that's the other thing you want to sort of look for. How does a trader trade the traders and not markets? Well, you you kind of think what what is what's the other guy thinking? Okay, just like I said, the overhead supply. Well, you've got a lot of people that probably bought in that range. Okay, so that's you just look at all of your technical analysis and keeping it simple. Okay, there's a lot of people excited about this nine. A lot of people got knocked out. Some shorts probably got sucked in. Okay. So that's how you're trading the traders and not the market. You're re you're using the charts to figure out what's going on. Yeah, this is not a stock for me. HP, um, you know, your net net price change is kind of sideways in here. It's kind of wide and loose. It's got a lot of bad memories. See, these are people you have to worry about, okay? So that's how you're trading traders and not the market. GPRO. Yeah, and you know what, uh, Brian, if you want, you could bring some of these up in, in Facebook, too. If you haven't joined, make sure you join the group as a member, and I'll be happy to look at them. Yeah, this is sideways at best for a while here. Then you got bad memories and a gap down, so that's another one. No, thank you. WWW. You know, again, big gap down. You're pushing into the gap. It's just, it's hard for me to get excited about something like this, okay? Let's see if I can, what's some of those um, 
what's some of those Chinese stocks that were recently on the Landry list that escapes me at them? Oh, SY would be like, see, like something like SY. Look, see, you cleared all this overhead supply. You take it off in here. You pull back a little bit and take it off again. Okay, so that's you know, something. And yeah, you got some bad memories back here, but it's not a whole lot of a big old base of traders to worry about. You're welcome, Brian, or uh, Alan, I should say. Oh, Myra, I love Myra. Yeah, Myra's cool. Okay. Now, Myra does have a lot of overhead supply. Okay. So that's up about 10 bucks a share. So yeah, you got about three bucks of room before Myra hits its overhead supply. I probably would not recommend this as a position trade. Okay. But on an intraday basis, if it's something you want to explore, I think it's something that's kind of interesting. And, you know, you had a nice little opening gap reversal here that didn't pan out, and then this thing just went off to the race. So, yeah, it could persist during the day. But, yeah, probably not as a position trade. Riot would be uh, its sister sister stock. And Riot, you can see, got a lot of overhead supply here. Now, if Riot gets up, let's say Riot gets up to, believe it or not, let's say 10 and a half or so. It could set up as a really, really nice setup. Now, if you're a little bit more adventurous, you know, eh, I was going to say you probably get a bow tie into this, but you still had a lot of overhead supply to deal with, a lot of bad memories. So I'd be careful with that one. HBI, HBI. We're going to have to wrap things up here fairly quickly. Yeah, now, now, there you go. There you go, Brian. Uh, HBI. Okay, so that's looking better. You got a nice persistent uptrend from lows. Okay, you got plenty of volume. You got a little overhead to deal with here, but not a tremendous amount. So yeah, when that one sets up, that might be worth a shot. I, this overhead's really bothering me, but let's see, it's eight, probably would trigger, probably pull back, trigger. Let's say it triggered at about 750 or so. Eh, you know, if you got to 11 bucks a share or 10, 11 bucks a share, then you'd have a little bit of profit. I, I'd be okay with, I, I might be okay with that. I'll know when I see it. Let's see what this sets up. But this is the best one so far that's what you want to look for so good job on that one and chtr we talked about that one chtr all right let me do last call and then i'll wrap things up yeah see it's kind of the same sort of action you know gap down here and it's rallying up and then you've got a mountain of you know like alan was asking how do you trade traders okay well you know there's a bunch of traders in here or buy and hope people right other people who bought who are going to look to get out of break even when that occurs okay now you know, maybe it's a good problem to have if you can ride it all the way up. All right, last one for Rick. C, V, and A. Yeah, this is just kind of bouncing off of lows. I mean, I would let this thing rally up quite a bit before getting too excited. Let it carve out a bottom. You know, one day does not a bottom make, okay? But, boy, look at that, look at that volume on that thing. It's huge, it's like tiny Elvis. Maybe this thing could set up. Maybe it could carve out a bottom, but it's not there yet, Rick. Let's let's wait to see if it could set up. But yeah, good uh, good eye on that one. It's something that's waking up. I'd almost prefer if it would have died out for like six months or so and then begin to rally. Some of those big fat bases at low levels could really pay off. Look, I need to go ahead and wrap things up based on time. I want to thank you guys and girls. I, I really enjoyed the show tonight. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. But thanks for all the interaction. We, uh, it looks like everybody's excited to get started with the new year. A happy new year if I haven't said it yet to everyone. And may the trend be with you. I'll see you. I think most everybody here, I'll see you tomorrow on Facebook. Everybody else, hope to see you again next, uh, next week. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.